Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another week of Line Change, the NHL betting podcast from the Action Network. My name is Michael Leboff, and joining me for this episode is Nick Martin. Uh, Tim Kalinowski is out looking at the eclipse, um, I guess, and he's missing this show, but he'll be back for Wednesday. Uh, this one is going to be busy, 13 games on the docket, a bunch of big games, but Nick, we're going to start with our favorite underdogs, and these are our two ugly dogs in two meaningless games, uh, both out west, so you got plenty of time to think about these games and your life's choices if you're betting these two dogs. Um, and you shouldn't be surprised. They're two of our favorites. The Arizona Coyotes are going to be your favorite on, underdog. They're plus 136 against the Kraken. Kraken coming back minus 162. The total is six. What do you see? Yeah, I like the Coyotes here to plus 125. I think this is just a little too long. I've had some misses trying to fade the Kraken lately, but I still want to stick it out. I think that right now these teams are really comparable. The Coyotes actually have a lot more uh, pieces showing legitimate offensive upside. Um, they just played, and Arizona was a little lucky to win in overtime, but I still think that makes the case that this number is just too long right now with what we're seeing. The Coyotes still have some superstars showing elite form. Clayton Keller's red hot, as he always seems to be this time of year. Nick Schmaltz looks really good, and their power play continues to look excellent. So I think this is just... You know, the Kraken all year, they've kind of held up a lot of market respect for their strong underlying process. They're probably a hair better than their record. I think that they'll maybe be a team to buy on next year, but this still just looks a little short to me. So, you know, I'm not huge on it. I'm, I'm going to say a half unit play for me at the current numbers is what I like. I've I've been having a tough time the last couple of weeks. Um, I don't want to give back too much when it, it, like this feels like a tough time of the year to be handicapping, I think is the reality of it. Um, but to me, this, this price just looks a little too long. And then the last note I'll throw out there is I, I do feel like a lot of followers actually had this one is the, I would weigh in, in that coyotes future. If you have it, they're at 71 points. So they need two wins out of five for most people. I'm hoping they can hit 76 too, for some of these, some of these other, uh, people who have those. So keep that in mind as well. But, but I like the yotes here on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, I don't think you're uh, going to need to do too much convincing to get me on the Coyotes against the Kraken in the spot. Uh, I think that these two teams are um, pretty close uh, when you look at where like the season is right now. They're, they're only six points you know, separating them. I know Seattle's played one less game, but still, like it's it shouldn't be this long. So uh, give me the Coyotes um, to, to get a third win in a row. So the Coyotes have had a, a nice little bounce back. They're, they're going to get us right back in, man. Let's fast forward to October when we are stumping for this team and Terigny and uh, all over again. Um, so Coyotes for you is your favorite dog. And another favorite of the show, the San Jose Sharks uh, are mine. They're plus 185 against the uh, Calgary Flames right now. This one is ugly. Yeah, it's at the Shark Tank, though. And I do think that uh, you're catching a Flames team that is just playing out the string. They've looked pretty terrible pretty desperate um for a while now three in a row they've lost uh, they're coming off of a uh, battle of alberta over the weekend i think that this is it like this team probably pretty excited for the season to end so uh, a good opportunity for the sharks to collect their 19th win of the season and make a trudge towards i think it's 48 points um is the record for the worst uh for the lowest total in the modern uh salary cap era that was the uh colorado avalanche uh, about a decade ago, um, so I think that was the that was actually Jared Bednar's first season, right? That was when Wah left them in a lurch a bit, uh, right right before this the training camp started. So I do think that that kind of plays into things a little bit for San Jose down the stretch, and uh, I'd like to see them get to fifty points. Um, you know, we love these Sharks, and I think that this number is just too long uh, against a Flames team that neither one of us have much confidence in. Yeah, it feels like you can kind of pinpoint the nights when the fl the Flames are going to bring it lately. I'm a little afraid when you, you know, like the the Sharks have just been so awful that it's a little frightening, but they have been decent lately with the two Blues wins. Maybe we've kind of seen the worst of it from Calgary. I would particularly like it, as I'll continue to note, and I think he's holding up decent market value because he hasn't been getting lit up that bad. But I, the more I watch him, Wolf just looks so small. It looks like it's so hard for him to move and cover teams that are creating quality chances side to side. Um, as talented as he is, like it's crazy to watch and see that he can hang in this good. So I do want to keep fading Wolf. I'll be here with you if I get confirmation that it is him. He hasn't had as many games recently as uh, I think the team would like looking at this stretch run. I think they want to get him in close to 
I don't know if it's going to be 50, 50, but more of the time and make sure he keeps getting NHL starts. So yeah, I definitely don't mind this one. I think if you wanted to do the over with the sharks for a super long price, which would probably be around, let's see what's out there. Uh, sharks and over six and a half is six to one right now. So I think that'd be a decent show and a, a real a fun way to try to target this uh, lottery bowl. Perfect. Uh, so that's coyotes and sharks off the top of the show. If you uh, haven't turned us off yet, we'll go down the big board. Uh, then we'll save our best bets for last. Let's start with the Ottawa Senators and the Florida Panthers sends our plus 195 right now. Uh, Cats minus 238. The total here is six and a half. I got nothing here. I do think that if you are interested in betting the Panthers to win the division right now, uh, this would be one way or if even if I should say like the Bruins are playing later in this game uh, on the slate as well. The Panthers are playing. If you think that the Panthers have a chance to win the division, like you need um, Florida to win this one, Bruins to lose um, against the Canes, and you could s- sort of you know see a path. They would still put Florida in a pretty long shot position. They would still be three points out with three games to go, but you could sort of see an avenue. They're twelve to one to win the division right now. So I think if you're going to bet Florida here, you might as well just take a or, or should you say if you're going to bet both those games uh you might as well just take the 12 to 1 and uh, for a little piece and, and hope that the rest of the season breaks your way but in terms of this game i don't think uh there's much uh, interest for me yeah i didn't really have much here and even that i don't hate the thinking but also the bruins i think are getting three wins so yeah, yeah. even then yeah uh, who knows though but yeah I, I didn't really have much here my expectation is the sends make it less pathetic than the other night but that the chances that like minus 225 still looks fair with that in mind like i think you know brady kachuk's gonna be pushing as hard as he possibly can to make this one less pathetic we're still getting all the classic kachuk narratives which i absolutely love because the sends have just been uh tough and he's doing all his all he can i'm not trying to pick on him but the it's been more of the same i thought that that game versus Washington wasn't so much a bounce back because the caps were just absolutely horrible. Um, so yeah, I, I thought this one looked about right. It feels like the Panthers are kind of through the worst of it and going to keep pushing to get into form here for the playoffs. Okay. A uh, huge one between the wings and caps up next. Detroit is minus 148 at home. Caps plus 124. Total six. You're the caps fan here, um, but we are on opposite sides of this equation and you it's actually me pulling for Washington and you going the other way. I fully will admit that Washington looks terrible right now. They're in bad form. Rest with Sandine is out. Uh, they're not getting the goaltending, which is a big, big deal for a team like this that was really leaning heavily on, on Charlie Lindgren to uh, keep them in games and allow them like the time to make a push or two or you know just gut out a 50-50 game. And they're not just that's just not happening right now. That said, and and as well as Detroit has showed uh, for you know I would say you know a week to ten days now, their last little stretch here ha- has been pretty impressive. I still just don't think that this line should be this long, um, considering what we've seen out of Detroit for the majority of of the season, which is that this is a team that closer to mediocre than good, I would say, and I think Washington is closer to mediocre than bad. So they're probably just on like the other side of of average. Like maybe Detroit is a tick above average and. Washington's a tick below average when you throw in that we don't really know what's going to happen with the wings goaltending. I know Alex Lyons kind of bounced back a bit, but still like we know that he can go up and down and he's still, you know, just Alex Lyon. I think there's way too many variables uh, with the the Red Wings to stay away from Washington at this number. Yeah, this was our biggest uh, point of contention ahead of this episode, which is kind of funny because it's me saying that the Capitals are worse than they are. But I do think that the Capitals are worse than uh, Mike is crediting right now. I feel like that little push at the end of March was this roster clicking on as clicking on as many levels as it possibly could right now, and that they're through that. And I think the Sandine absence means quite a bit. He's actually been one of their legitimate needle movers. Uh, offensively, they look so flat. You could just see that Sens loss coming the whole game, even after Ottawa gave up their classic freebie to freebie to start the game, and none of the big dogs are really like pulling weight in the right direction. And when they are, they're still getting outplayed at the other end. Detroit looks really opportunistic. I still think that their play has looked significantly improved. 
Um, so I actually thought that Detroit looked a little short here. I feel like minus 150 or better is even minus 155. I would play. I, I think the wings are going to pay off in this big spot. I like the way their big guns are, are playing right now. And then the other thing was, I think that that game two weeks ago in Washington was the absolute best version of that game for the caps. Yeah. I thought the wings still had the better of the legitimate, legitimate scoring chances. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like the wings are going to find a way in this matchup. Yeah, I think uh, we'll see. Um, I have a little bit more faith in Washington than you do. Obviously, I think that this number should probably be around plus one fifteen. So I'll take a take a stab with Spencer Carberry and the boys. Uh, Columbus Blue Jackets are relishing the role of spoiler of late. They beat the Flyers in a wild game. They gave the Islanders a decent run. I mean, the Islanders played outplayed them but they hung around with jet greaves and goal who looks really solid we've had some uh i think they've won what four or five they beat the the avalanche they they were just in a in a good spot right now columbus and they're now a big price against the tampa bay lightning team that sort of playing out the string sort of not i mean john cooper cor- sort of tipped his hand that they were going to start um you know being pretty precautious or, or cautious with um injuries that or guys being banged up we saw with Sorelli and and Brandon Hagel just they're going to play it safe here not all that much to play for they're four points behind uh the Maple Leafs if Toronto picks up a point at least a point against the um the Penguins that would put me that uh Tampa Bay would basically be three games back with five to go and you're really grasping at straws to find a path to that uh third seed plus it's not all that appealing to even just like go get it um, meanwhile, the Jackets are banged up and all that, but they are playing all right. Like, I know that they lost the second half uh, of that back-to-back, but they had Malcolm Subban in goal against the Hurricanes, and I thought even in that game they weren't as bad as he, I thought they were going to be. Um, so I think plus 250 against a, a Lightning team that has made no secrets about ta- you know taking nights off uh, in, in situations like this is not a crazy bet at all. Like, I don't, I don't think... I, the more I think about it, the more I like Columbus here. Yeah, I, I'm a little indifferent. I kind of like the Lightning here. It feels like they're really good at exposing these teams with softer defensive play and, and turning that into actual goals. And I've also gotten burned trying to play some of these complete swell, seller dwellers too much the last two weeks. So I'm not going to do it more than I need to. I think the one angle that I'll probably be watching for is seeing if maybe, like you said, I, I do agree that Columbus probably could have fared a little better versus Carolina. But I also think that's, Probably just a little bit of where their offensive upside is right now. And that, that Flyers game was probably more of an anomaly with all the point shots getting in. And uh, so, yeah, the one thing that I'm kind of going to be watching for is seeing if maybe Columbus comes out a little hot and the Lightning get down. I could see that being a thing. And then when the Lightning turn it on, get some power plays and some chances, they they find a way to to get back into it and get the win. But I was a little indifferent overall in this game. Uh, all right, let's talk about the Flyers. They're minus 142 in Montreal against the Habs, plus 120. This total is six. These two teams played a couple weeks ago. Montreal won. The Flyers have lost seven in a row, six in a row. Uh, and the schedule has not been all that daunting either. Uh, it's It's been ugly for Philadelphia. The main problem, and no, there's no bones about it, has just been the goaltending, and there's no guarantee that that's going to get better. Like, Fedotov was not great against the Sabres. Erickson was terrible against the Blue Jackets. He's just been really bad for for a while now and uh, doesn't have any sort of pedigree where you can expect him to bounce back. You have no idea what you're getting out of Fedotov. I honestly wasn't wouldn't have been surprised if they had called up like Felix Sandstrom again or or Cal Peterson and just been like, it can't get much worse, so why not just throw someone in there? Uh, the Canadians are starting to just look a little I guess out of gas. They they were getting dominated by the Rangers uh, for most of that game, but Caden Primo kept them in it. They've lost three in a row, so I don't really have much interest in, in Montreal, but I'm not laying it with the Flyers with the goalies, um, although you lean that way. Yeah, I lean that way, and I'll probably go back to a take that was pretty idiotic versus Columbus and compounded my bad week with... Uh, I still think the Flyers are due for an offensive resurgence. I, I really do. I still like a lot of the pieces they have. They've shot 7% for over a month here. And I feel like everyone's talking about the goaltending and the offensive play has been worse. Don't get me wrong, but I do think that it's in one of these classic NHL runs where they just haven't scored on a ridiculous amount of like their grade A chances that 
like you're seeing connect me towing clear cut two on ones over the net and stuff like that, that I think just over time won't happen and that they're still generating a lot of chances. So I think that we're going to see a game soon where all their top stars bounce back and have a huge impact. I think that that could be this one. So I'll probably uh, go with some flyers props again, that were really bad to me on Saturday night. I, I still feel like their offense is going to eventually break through and show better. And that, that just, the fact that they can't finish any of their looks for what's becoming a pretty large sample is is really hiding the pretty reasonable offensive process. Um, so I, I kind of like them in this game for that reason. Uh, but like you said, with the goaltending, I don't know. I feel like I'd rather take like the same. Well, actually, you're getting a slightly better number than minus 138 to just bet them to score four goals right now. So I'll, I'll probably go back to that well, even though they let me down on, on Saturday. I, I do think that the offenses do do... Uh, fair better and and montreal right now is a pretty gettable target um i should have double checked if if is gonna remain silent sideline but their decor is hurting a little bit compared to what it was too so i think that this is a good time to go with the flyers getting some offense and, and stick with the angle that they're they're due for better offensively yeah we're uh we we bring it up all season long that, that this is not the time you want to like kind of start fading the flyers at all like this this is a everyone has started to kind of count them out and in the race and say their season's over but i i would pump the brakes on that i know that they are now in a in a tough spot with four games left and a, a maximum points of, of 91 but uh they're really they're they're two points back they've got while uh they've got tiebreakers over a couple teams so it's not uh time to just say oh fade the flyers they're i'm not i'm not going against them here I just yeah. don't want to bet on and the it, goalies. And we're hearing a lot about all these other narratives. And maybe that's part of it that, you know, there's some negativity in the room and they're gripping the sticks a little tight. You know, the pressure of this playoff chokes kind of getting them a little bit. But I I do think that has also just coincided with uh, a, a run of just a really tough ability to finish, which happens to all these teams. You kind of see the vice versa of this. It's such an ebb and flow in the NHL. And I feel like at a, a lot of it just does come down to you know, the chances that you finish versus the ones that you don't and that it is that simple. And I think right now the Flyers have really just been on the bad end of that as well as the uh, bad goaltending. All right, on to, uh, I think, a pretty peculiar one between the Leafs and Devils. Toronto will be on the second night of a back-to-back with Joseph Wohl in goal. Uh, they are minus 115 right now. Devils are minus 105 at home, total six and a half. There's a couple things, I think, think to keep in mind here that the Leafs are playing Pittsburgh at home on um a Monday night and that game I can essentially like a point out of that game essentially wraps up the number three seed and, and the, the Leafs have been playing meaningless hockey for quite a quite a while now it, it seems like uh basically being assured of finishing third or a very you know tiny chance that they finish um in that first wild card spot, but there's very little difference between the two. And then, you know, you got the devils who I continue just to be a bizarre team to, to handicap. They beat the, um, they beat the senators on Saturday. They lose in overtime in an okay effort against the, the predators and with Capo Kakinen in goal. And it, God bless anyone who's bet, you know, the devil's quite a bit this season or bet devil's games quite a bit this season and come out ahead because it's, they've been such a headache that said, like, I've got no idea what the Leafs, how the Leafs are going to approach this game. I would not be surprised if there's like three or four guys just coming out of the lineup as they try to manage their workload down uh, the last couple of weeks here, you know, playing on a, in a meaningless back to back where you're traveling. Doesn't sound like a, a spot where you'd want guys who've already been banged up, uh, risking them so i i wouldn't be surprised to see some some bodies come out of the, the leafs lineup and all of this is to say i'm probably going to pass on it i think in a vacuum i would look at the leafs but with uh all that uncertainty i can't really endorse the play on them right now more than 24 hours ahead of it yeah my take on the same is, is or my take on this game is pretty much the exact same as yours i think in a nutshell minus 120 is a pretty short number on the leafs considering the way they've played they've been in these you know, meaningless game scripts for a while. They've also been playing really well in them. Like uh, the Montreal game, that was Montreal Super Bowl. I thought they would play better. And the Leafs game just looked pretty well-rounded and they kind of slapped them. And it's been a lot of that lately. So in a similar kind of spot, I think that minus 120 does look pretty short and that 
depending on who sits, Toronto's pretty well situated to handle it. Like on the, the blue line, they have like eight NHL bodies. They did so good without Morgan Riley. So I, I think that kind of shows there isn't one of them that probably means too much. Um, but I mean, maybe if someone like Matthews sat, that's obviously pretty huge. So I think with this coming out tomorrow, the important note, I, I'm close on Toronto. I'd like to see how tonight's game goes. But I think if you get the full lineup, you probably just live with it. Um, I think that it looks a little a little short to me. And, you know, Wall's respectable goaltending option too. I think that the Devils defense scores continue to look more and more just like a huge flaw that they don't really have the bodies to turn around right now. And you talk about the Devils side of things that I was going to have a fit if they managed to win that game versus Nashville. I thought that was another game where their decor just got exposed over and over. And uh, Jake Allen was tremendous. And they still, and and also the Preds had some posts, everything about it suggests that it shouldn't have been close and, and they still lost. So I don't really think the Devils are showing us anything that means that they should be this close to the Leafs. Um, so yeah, I, I, I lean towards Toronto for sure. Stars and Sabres up next. Uh, Dallas is a minus 205 favorite at home. Uh, Sabres plus 170, total of six. Uh, Dallas comes uh, out of the weekend with a massive win over the Colorado Avalanche. It's great that they had their winning streak snapped by the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. And the next night they get the first win, I believe, in like 16 tries for a team traveling to Colorado on a second night of a back-to-back. So it just really tells you how crazy hockey is and st- and all that. One thing I want to bring up about Dallas in the big picture here is when you look at, when you think about the, you know, elite offense offenses in the league, right? The, the, the names that come to your mind, right? Are Colorado, Toronto, Edmonton, say the Rangers, uh, Tampa. There's one team that has scored more goals than, um, Dallas and that is Colorado and they are technically one goal behind them in the the NHL standings um there are t- they're they're really two goals behind because you get the goal for the shootout but that's just something to keep in mind when you're breaking down these these playoff races is, is this isn't the Dallas Stars team that I think people have grown accustomed to which is like they can just shut down a game and, and grind out results like they are they're an offensive dynamo and their their offense is so balanced they are I heard somebody uh, I believe it was Jake Hahn uh, c- kind of compare them to the Seattle Kraken last year, except them on steroids. And I think that's a good way to look at them, like four lines that can that can all do damage um, in big ways. So uh, that kind of is a good segue, I think, to pat myself on the back into your bet. Yeah, I think I like the the stars spread here. I, I'm just going to take my chance. I think it's a better than 50-50 chance they just blow this game up. There's way too much offensive talent. Buffalo's kind of been, been getting crushed defensively here for a pretty large segment really you if you go back to the trade deadline they're sixth worst in expected goals against per 60 or sorry third worst i should say six worth in terms of expected goals i think it's been roughly that ugly they've you know gotten some pretty good play in goal which has hidden some pretty ugly performances even versus philly that was pretty bad i thought that really could have gotten a lot worse and a big part of it is just the defense core it doesn't really seem to have the talent to turn it around right now. Bo Byram's starting to really struggle and he continues to get big usage. So I, I think this isn't a bad spot to just target sticking with the stars playing really good hockey. Um, I thought that Dallas deserved to be a bigger favorite than minus 220, which obviously the other point is if I'm saying I like the spread, you're saying you like it up at the, the minus 220 number as well. We'll see where it moves. But yeah, Dallas looks incredible. I think that there really aren't you know, this this is going to be hopefully one of our best takes. I hope they get the president, so it looks a little out of reach here. Um, that, you know, we've been saying all they needed was Jake Ottinger to come around, and suddenly he has come around, and they look really, really good. So I'm already thinking about that second-round series. It's going to be tough to pick who comes out in front. They obviously made a pretty case, pretty good case last night, but that was with Miko Rantanen out of the mix for Colorado. Um, so yeah, I think that it's a, not a bad time to try to target the stars staying hot. Yeah, I think, uh, that actually worked for me. I, I'm going to end up on stars minus one and a half now as well. Uh, Jets and Preds, this one's essentially pick them. Jets are a slight underdog on the road, minus one of five Preds minus minus one fifteen, total of five and a half. Um, 
Got nothing here. I think this is a little bit of a um, immovable force against an unstoppable object in the way that these teams want to play uh, with good goaltending on both sides. I think you're really um, kind of really for, or I feel like I'd be forcing it trying to make a bet on this one. Yeah, I agree. This looks like a pretty, pretty easy pass. Very, very fair looking numbers. It's a fun game because there's some, some pretty, there's some significance in the standings, but Ultimately, I don't really think this is one you need to get on. Yep. Uh, next up, the Avs and Wild. Minnesota plus 164, Colorado. Minus 198, total of six and a half. You mentioned the significance of the standings with the Jets and Preds. You know, Nashville couldn't make a go of trying to catch Winnipeg if they get a win. But also, Winnipeg is only two points behind Colorado all of a sudden. They've won three on the spin. The Jets have. Colorado's lost two in a row and are just five, four, and one in their last ten I do think this looks like a get right spot for Colorado, um, but the price is a little out of whack for me, so I'm not going to play it. Yeah, I'm also just going to pass here. I think we've done good to fade the wild enough times. A lot of those ones were, you know, really close. the The Jets game on Saturday was really close. That was our pick on the the other video that we do. But I think the time to to call it in is right now. Uh, especially if Ranton and remained out at this number, I'd, I'd consider this a pass. They're playing competitive enough, and I just think this looks a little long. The Wild definitely could have fared better when these teams met last week. So for those reasons, I'm I'm not overly interested in uh, getting in getting in on this one on a good slate. All right, last one before we get to the best bet segment. The Kings are a prohibitive minus two sixty favorite in Anaheim. The Ducks plus two ten total five and a half. Anaheim looked, uh, you know, pretty good against St. Louis on Sunday night. They've had some scrappy efforts over the past uh, few weeks. They are Leo Carlson is back in the lineup. Trevor Zegers maybe has started to pick up his game a bit, and that's where you're going. I got no interest betting either side, but you have a play on Zegers. Yeah, I'm going to play Zegers point if I can get better than plus 130. We'll see. Maybe that will be a reach. It's, uh, I mean, it, it's tough to guess these, like I always say, because the I liked it last night versus a Blues team that defends horrifically compared to the Kings in a game with a much higher total where the Ducks were also, you know, they were only, I think, plus 120 at puck drop. So, or plus 125. So that should mean we get a better number here, but also Zegers played good and put up two points, which is part of the reason I like him to stay hot here. I still think, like, if you look at the way he's produced when he's been on his game, uh, basically his whole career, the numbers that are going to be out there are pretty pretty long. And I think since it is a really good, good defensive team in the Kings, we should get a decent number. The other thing is, I don't know if it was just kind of an outlier in terms of the way that the shift before worked or whatever, but the unit that I think should be the Ducks' top power play unit got much more of the power play ice time in that game. It, um, so whether or not that's something sustainable, I do think that Carlson and Zegers and these guys should be on the top unit. Um, so for, I like that as well. So yeah, if you can get Zegers plus one thirty because of how good the Kings' defensive uh, play has been, I think it's a good time to keep buying on him. It feels like he's kind of invested right now. I think that Cronin wants to use him and let him kind of find his game and get back in form before the season ends, where they have absolutely nothing to play for. So I kind of want to buy low on Zegers in these upcoming games, and uh, and hope he keeps producing. Okay, uh, best bets now. Uh, let's start with yours. It's a pick em between the Bruins and Hurricanes in Boston, total five and a half. Uh, where are you going? I'm going back to the Canes, even though they burned me in exactly this matchup on <laughs> Friday. I still think that this is just the better team. And the fact that it's on the road, I, I feel a little mitigated. Like I, I'm indifferent about it, partially just because of the way that game Friday went. I always feel like when these teams are rested and ready to go in these kind of spots, as gets proven every playoff, that they can handle the pressure of playing on the road and, and find a way to make it work. And right now, I still just think the Hurricanes are too far above the Bruins to be priced as a pick em. I think this one will move, but I'll definitely play it to minus 125. And for respect to Boston, they played excellent in Carolina, but a huge part of that game, and Boston really did do well to squeeze the life out of it and just keep everything to the outside after they got their early lead. But a huge part of that was that Carolina just came out so flat in the first period after their five-day layoff. 
I don't think that that's going to happen again here. And I still just want to revert back to kind of what, what I think of these two teams right now. If anything, I've been higher on the Bruins than I think most handicappers and a lot of analysts. I still kind of think they actually are right there with uh, Florida and some of these other teams. They've been playing really well recently and everyone just kind of keeps writing them off and it feels like everyone's kind of uh, trending towards Tampa Bay. Like that one in specific, I, if it, that's the first round matchup and it seems like it would be close to a pick, I actually would love Boston. I'm already getting down circled on my uh, potential playoffs looks. I think that Boston's just got way too good of a decor to be a dog in that series or close. But anyways, I, I think the point for this game is that Carolina is still the team that I view as the very best in the East and we're getting them uh, in a good spot coming off that Boston loss on Friday. So I, I think they deserve to be a favorite in this game. I like the spot and I think I want to buy on them again. Yeah, I like the Canes here too. I think it's, a, uh, you know, simply put the better team um, at a, at a good price. And I think Carolina, you can trust them to, try to continue this role into uh, the playoffs um, until, you know, they're mathematically eliminated from catching uh, the Rangers. So I'm not too concerned about that. Um, speaking of the Rangers, my best bet will come in their game against the Islanders. Uh, I'll be in the building for this one. I hate going to Islander Ranger games, but I'm going to go. Uh, Rangers are minus 130 favorite on the road. Islanders plus 110. The total is sitting at a uh, juice six or five and a half at the time of recording. I like this game to go to overtime. That's my favorite bet of uh, the slate. I think that the Islanders have made a no bones about like their commitment to just trying to play a much more cohesive, tighter defensive game uh, at five on five. The Rangers aren't typically a team that generates a ton of chances at five on five. The ones that they do get are usually good. They're usually in transition and often mistakes. That's a little hairy for the Islanders, a team that um, has had their fair share of, of pretty dumb mistakes throughout the season, including uh, when these two teams met outdoors. Of course, um, they also have a terrible penalty kill, although it's been improving of late and the Rangers have a great power play. Uh, but I do think that the the Islanders trying will try to do everything they can to keep this game on script. And just by doing that automatically um, raises the floor of this bet. I think that there will be pretty limited, limited space. You can trust the goalies. Varlamov's in, in, in terrific form right now. Shesterkin, yeah, he's wob he's been like a little bit wobbly compared to like the 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 ceiling that he plays out of late, but he's still one of the best in the league. So I think that there's just enough ingredients here um that this game can go to overtime. And there's also the added fact that the Rangers are the type of team that if the Islanders take a two nothing lead going or a two goal lead going into the third period, you know that they can erase it. Do you know the Islanders can cough up a lead? And and I do think that um, you know, if if this thing is pretty tight late in the game, the Islanders are just gonna try to shut it down. And of course, they've played uh, more overtime games than just about anybody in the NHL. That's going to end up being, you know, most over well over a quarter of their games going past regulation uh, this season. So, uh, never a bad bet with the Islanders to to bet the thing, the game to go past overtime plus three fifty out there right now. Uh, yeah, I'm in complete agreement. I like the overtime bet here. We hit on it in the winter, whatever stadium series, in uh, obviously pretty lucky fashion. I still just think I like the overtime here and I like the under five and a half. I would need plus 105, um, but I would definitely lean towards that. I still think, as I've kind of said to you, and I think we've seen fairly well when the Islanders play well, their greatest upside is still going to be just the ability to make games into a coin flip and try to lock it down defensively. I think obviously that was where we saw they were like shockingly bad earlier in the season, but they've kind of trended into better form. On that front recently, they're their top third team in terms of most defensive analytics under WA over the last month, and they're pretty middling in terms of chances generated. So I, I still think the Isles are pretty much a pure under team. Um, it's a little scary because I think more of these Rangers Islanders games have opened up recently. It feels like there's always a lot of penalties, and you know, if we could see the Rangers maybe come out a little flat. But I also I think that this is just the right time to buy on the narrative. Like this is how the Islanders need to play. This is how they're going to play in the playoffs. If they get in and play Carolina, we're going to see totals of five. So I think this is the right time to buy on that. I like the under time and I like, or I like the overtime and I like the under. So I, I yeah, those are, I'm, I think we're kind of seeing this one pretty similarly. Yeah. Uh, I would agree with you with all of that. Um, it's, uh, it'll be pretty hairy to be in the building, but, got to do it uh 
And you you said it, right? Like it's not just games against teams that are better than them that they're playing. They need to make things tight to win. Uh, but if you look like they, they beat the Blackhawks by one, they essentially beat the Blue Jackets by one with the empty netter. They beat the Predators one nothing with before the empty netter. Um the, the Flyers game, their their win against the Flyers was overtime. Uh they were that <laughs> they let up that last second goal. So their win before that against the Panthers was a one goal win. So it's that's just what it's like. It's not fun uh to be a fan of, but um it's a makes for a good bet here on the overtime at plus three fifty. So that's Islanders Rangers go to overtime for my best bet. Uh, plus three fifty. You like the Canes and a pick them against the Bruins. Off the top, our favorite dogs were the Arizona Coyotes against the Seattle Kraken and the San Jose Sharks against the Calgary Flames. Uh, that'll do it for us on this thirteen game slate. Best of luck. Um, definitely exhibit some self control on on sl- uh, slates like this. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday with Tim to look ahead to a three game slate, and then again on Thursdays uh, another. I think it's ten games on Thursday. Uh, but until we get back together, best of luck with all your bets. 